1965, Gordon Moore, uh, the co-founder of Intel, observed that the number of transistors that could be placed on a computer chip was doubling every couple of years. And he predicted that that trend would continue for the foreseeable future. This is known as Moore's Law. And in 1965, he was right. But 50 years later, that trend is about to come to an end. So what does this mean? We're used to living in a world where our computational uh, power grows dramatically all of the time. Apple release a new iPhone every year. We each buy a new laptop every couple of years. And everyone's talking about the revolution that will come from our capacity to analyze vast quantities of data with unprecedented ease. And for the last 50 years, the improvements in computational power have come from Moore's Law. The problem we have is that the features on a computer chip are now only a couple of atoms wide. And so that means they can't actually get any smaller. And so I'm here today to tell you that Moore's Law is about to come to an end. And the future of high performance computing is personalized computing, not personal computers where the hardware is not necessarily optimized for any particular calculation, but personalized computing. Leading thinkers around the world are working now to find out how to locate standard computers alongside highly optimized digital circuitry. And so I'll call that personalized computing. And this is one way of dealing with the potential end of Moore's law. But what do you do if you can't actually perform those calculations? For example, if you don't understand the details of the system well enough even to write the computer code, or if you actually need more transistors to operate the code than atoms exist in the universe. So now let's talk a little bit about quantum information and communication <coughs> technologies. Quantum computers are known to be able to crack the encryption that makes your internet banking secure. Quantum computers are also able to deliver provably secure transmission of secret keys. But both of these ideas were actually preceded by the idea that you would need a quantum computer to emulate the behavior of quantum systems. And so I'll call that quantum personalized computing. And quantum personalized computing might actually be one of the more interesting near-term applications of quantum computation. Because, for example, you can use it to understand the details of small molecules, which can be used to design medicines, as well as sensors and lots of other things. So the thing that I'm most interested in is making use of uh, waveguide technology for quantum purposes. And so we're going to make use of standard telecommunications hardware and use it in a slightly different way. And our goal is to drive the same revolution in miniaturization that led to Moore's law. So researchers in this discipline have long known that for quantum devices to escape from the lab, we need to solve a number of problems. Some of those problems are that the current equipment is large, complicated, expensive, and requires a team of specialists to run. Some of the other issues are that each device is just a little bit different, and current technologies are not particularly reprogrammable. What we're working to do is to take uh, the physical infrastructure of waveguide technology and couple it with the design power of systems engineering to be able to design and build truly uh, effective quantum technologies and ones that work in spite of manufacturing imperfections. Let's talk about an example. The operational amplifier in electronics exists everywhere. They're so simple and so easy to find these days that even 10 year old children can design their own electronics. And I'm working with a team of physicists and engineers and the first thing that we have designed and hope to build is a quantum operational amplifier. And in this way, we hope to usher in the new world of having quantum devices that you can buy off the shelf and they work each and every time as you requested them. So imagine how cool it would be if you could actually have 10 year old children designing their own quantum computer in exactly the same way that they can actually now write their own apps for iPhones. So what does all of this mean? If we are going to truly take advantage of the recent revolution in data, uh, in big data and data analysis, we cannot rely on Moore's law. We will need to rely on personalized computing. And quantum personalized computing is on its way and it will play a role. But in order for that to occur, then we need to be able to design and build devices that are reprogrammable, simple to operate, work off the shelf every time, and they don't need to rely on infinitely precise manufacturing techniques. And in this way, we will be able to deliver truly personalized quantum calculations that can lead to precision designed medicines all the way through to provably secure encryption techniques. Quantum co computation and personalized quant computation will play a role in the post Moore's law age. So let me just leave you with this question. What do you think a quantum computer will look like? Thank you. <laughs>